I've been a maintainer of Mocha uh, since mid-2014. Uh, um, I work at IBM as a developer advocate um, in the IoT and emerging technology uh, area. Um, I'm Bone Skull on, on GitHub and uh, Twitter, um, except with a zero on Twitter. Um, and so I'm going to talk today, this is kind of just an introduction to um, unit testing Node.js apps with Mocha. Um, this is this is really kind of low level. It's uh, I kind of wrote it with you know um, having someone who who's never really done this before in mind. And so um, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of run through some uh, fundamentals um, of of testing. Um, just just a couple concepts. Just just I'll keep it really short because there's a lot of concepts. But just just I'm just gonna do a couple. Um, then. Um, uh, We'll talk about how to write a unit test with Mocha, um, and I'll show you that process. And then uh, we'll move on to an integration test um, uh, with Mocha as well. Um, and if there's questions about anything along the way, just pipe up and, and stop me. Um, so um, what is Mocha? Uh, Mocha is a testing framework. Um, so a testing framework. Um, has a few responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is providing an API uh, to help you write tests, automated tests against your software. Um, uh, a, a test framework will also help you organize those tests. Um, some uh, test frameworks, more than others, will actually let you run the tests too, and Mocha is one of those. Um, and uh, also uh, another responsibility is they report the results of the tests. Um, so you, you write them and you run them and at the end you get, you know, in various human or machine readable formats, you know, this is what happened with the test. This is, these are the ones that failed and this is why, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, Mocha, is, Mocha runs in um, Node.js of course, uh, and that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about testing in the browser with Mocha um, because Mocha also runs in, in the browser. Uh, it runs in, um, right now, uh, the oldest browser we support is IE9, but I think we're going to ditch that soon. I, the, then the oldest one will be IE11. Um, hopefully you don't need to actually we've never tested opera i have no idea i just pulled that off anyway so um so what what's cool about mocha mocha is simple it's got this it's got a very small api surface um it's it's easy to learn there's there's really just not a lot you have to remember when working with mocha um it, it kind of does one job and and it it seems to do it well um, it, it lets you write your tests and it kind of wants to get out of the way and, and um, because of that um, it's actually it's very versatile. So um, it will kind of bend how you want to you know how do you how you want to push it. Um, uh, you know it's, it's not limited to simply one kind of test. You can write many different kinds of tests. You can run that test in many different environments. Um, you know, you can use reporters designed for Node.js um, running in a headless browser and still output, you know, like weird stuff to the console. And just, you just, there are things I never consider that people use this uh, for. And, and of course, you know, they file bugs about all this weird stuff. Um, so uh, one of the things about Mocha is that the entire user-facing API, the thing that you, in, uh, you interact with as, as a developer writing your test, the whole thing can be swapped out. Um, there's a default, which is this kind of um, uh, RSpec style um, API, but, but it can also, Mocha also ships with, uh, if you're more comfortable with, with the way QUnit works, um, which is, uh, I think originally QUnit was written to test jQuery itself. Um, if you're if you're familiar with that, you can write your Mocha tests in in, in QUnit format. Or there's several different ways you can do it. Um, and if you don't like any of them, you can even write your own and just use it. And I haven't seen too many of that, too many of those. Um, the defaults work pretty well for a lot of people. Mocha is also 
I dare say fun um, for a testing framework, I suppose, um, because there's really no other testing framework that has a NyanCat reporter um, that I know of anyway. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about some fundamentals. So this is kind of, this is what Mocha is, and, and now we're going to go into um, fundamentals of testing. And so this, this, this is just going to be like three, this is terminology. This is not, we're not going to go very deep. It won't hurt, I promise. The first thing is the assertion. And so um, what is an assertion? It's, it's a, fundamentally, it's a comparison. Um, and if the comparison is, is true or truthy, nothing happens. If the comparison is false or falsy, then it throws an exception. Um, and it's really trivial to write your own assertion function. And here's, here's an example. So um, you pass assert an, a, a value. If that value um, evaluates to falsy, throw an error. Um, that's, that's basically what an assertion is. Testing, you know, testing, you're going to make a lot of assertions in your tests. That's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of the idea. Um, so the, the next term uh, is the unit test. Um, and so a unit test is kind of like this recursive acronym, or not, it's, the definition is, is it's, well, it's a test of a unit, and, and that doesn't mean anything right. But you have to know what a unit is. And so um, a unit test asserts a unit behaves as intended. So a unit is the smallest testable chunk of code. So, you know, generally that's going to be a function uh, because you can't very easily crawl inside a function and pull a little bit out and just test that piece. Um, so we're talking about functions most of the time, but not always. Um, you know, you can have a unit test that maybe is, is testing events or something like that um, where it's, it's not a function itself that you're testing per se. Um, so, a, a unit test then has two responsibilities. One, it executes the unit, and so uh, I may refer to this as the unit under test or code under test. Um, the uh, unit test then makes an assertion about whatever it just did. And so, in the case of a function that returns something like, say, you have a function and it adds two numbers. Um, that is your unit. Call it, call it add or something. And you pass it, you know, two and two. Your unit test is going to execute that function, and then it's going to make an assertion that the function returned four. So um, that's, that's one way. Uh, if your unit just does some side effects, um, and, and we'll see that here um, in a minute. Like, you know, maybe it modifies some application state. Um, you can just, you know, your unit test is going to execute your function, and then it's going to make an assertion about the state of the application. So here's, here's the last concept. There's only three I'm going to do. So it's the integration test. And so um, uh, I found when I started writing unit tests, I would not really be sure what I was doing, or in some cases, the code I was trying to test was just very poor and, and coupled too tightly, and I was trying to write unit tests. In fact, that's what I thought I was doing, but I was writing integration tests. And so um, an integration test um, asserts like a, a it's, it's a test across multiple units or multiple modules, multiple layers of your application or multiple subsystems. Um, when your unit test starts testing other units too, you, you just wrote an integration test and, and it, it, you can get really confused and uh, your, your, your whole tests, all your tests can get really confused. And, but if you find yourself doing that all the time, it might be a sign that, that it's not the test that that's the problem. It's it's that your code's not very testable. Um, so uh, it, an integration test 
is, is a test across you know, groups or layers. And if that sounds vague, it's because it is vague. It, it, it depends on your, your software's, you know, the kind of application you have. Maybe a, a web server will have an integration test um, you know, between, I don't know, you know, the, something that's going hit, to hit, hit a, a JSON endpoint or something. Maybe a command line app is going to have something different. Um, a desktop app, what, whatever, you know, an integration test is really just depends on what you're trying to test. You may not know how, I feel like this is, this is like required to put in a tutorial like this. This is how you install Mocha with NPM. Um, how you install most things. I recommend you use a, a save it as a development dependency with, I, I like capital D. Some people like save dev, but you know, whatever. So this is how you install Mocha in Node. If you're gonna use it in the browser, it's a different story maybe. Um, so never mind that. I'm just talking about Node. This is how you do it in Node. And so what happens when you do this? Well, um, Mocha is added to your manifest, which is package.json. It's in the dev dependencies property. It, it becomes part of that, um, you know, that object. Um, and it also gives you the Mocha executable, which lives in um, your local node modules in the dot bin folder. I have no idea what that looks like on Windows. All of this is going to be, you know, Linuxy, Unixy type stuff. I, I'm not sure exactly how that works on Windows, but so you get a Mocha executable. It, it's in it's in your your manifest, and next time you run npm install, you'll get Mocha. So great. But if we're installing Mocha, that means we have something to test, and so this is what we have to test. So. This is the obligatory contrived example, which is some express middleware. I couldn't think of, I mean, I, I don't know what else to do. It's something that's kind of practical, but really, really simple. Um, so if, if you're unfamiliar with express, express is like the, the, the default, like, like web, framework, web server framework for Node.js. It's what you're probably going to reach for. Um, there are other ones, but most people just use Express, it seems. And so uh, Express is, is kind of this um, wrapper around um, you know, Node's built-in HTTP server. Uh, and it, 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 it basically functions as this, as, as like a list of, it, it's it's built out of these things called middleware, and so middleware is just a function. Um, and this is this is this is middleware. It, it's it's function accepts uh, three parameters. When you build an express act, you basically chain all these things together. You set up routes, and um, you know what happens when a uh, um, a, a request comes into your server is uh, that request gets filtered or it's sent through all this different middleware. And, and eventually something happens and uh, you get your response. Um, and so a middleware function uh, accepts a request, which is req, which is this object that represents the, the request, whether that's a get request, a post request, it's some, somebody use some machine hitting your web server. And the re, uh, response object, which is going to be this thing you're building and that's what you're eventually going to return um, and send it back to the requester. And then the, there's this, this third parameter to middleware, which is this, which is next, and it's a function, and it says, I'm done doing what I'm doing. Go ahead and execute the next middleware, whatever that is. You don't really care what it is. It's just, it's just like, it's, it's like a queue, and it, you know, knocks off the next one. And so this particular bit of middleware um, it adds a request time property to the request object. And so it's, it's not a, uh, it's a JavaScript timestamp, which is not a Unix timestamp because it's in milliseconds. Anyway, that's what it does, and that's all it does. And so we decided we wanted to write a unit test for this. And so we're going to make one. Um, 
Uh, Mocha will, it, it has some defaults, which I think are pretty reasonable. If you make a folder called test, um, Mocha assumes that if you give it no other information, it assumes your test files are in there. And so if you make a test directory and, and put a file in it with a .js extension, it will find that file and execute it. Um, by convention, um, we like to name these files with the .spec.js. I, I don't know where that came from, but <laughs> it's just one of those things. Well, we always did it that way, so um, that's kind of how we're doing it. But it's it's a good way to say you know kind of just visually tell oh this is a test and not not a source file. Um, some people like to put them next to the source files, which is another way to do it. So, but anyway, uh, by default it looks in this test directory, and the file we're going to create is request dash time dot spec dot js, which will contain unit tests for this middleware. And before I go any further. Um, and this is this is something that that people get really religious about. It's that uh, Mocha uses globals. Um, when you go and you want to write a test that uh, you know Mocha is going to run, you don't have a like require Mocha like give me all these functions at the top of your test file. Uh, you don't have import stuff from Mocha. Uh, Mocha doesn't even use a namespace. It doesn't even have like that like sort of, you know, courtesy. It simply just dumps everything into the global namespace. And, you know, in the browser, that's going to be the window object. In Node, it's the global object. Um, and so why? Um, the only reason that I can think of, it, now, I didn't write Mocha. I just maintain it. But the only, I can only speculate why some of the, the, the decisions were made. But it reduces boilerplate, plain and simple. It's a trade-off, uh, a design decision that was made. This is, you know what? I don't want to have to require all this crap at the top of every file because I got 400 test files. If we simply throw things into the global, like you're not supposed to do that, but we did it anyway. And so there it is. It's for developer ergonomics, more or less. It reduces boilerplate. And some people don't like this. Um, but uh, it is what it is. Um, what we want to do uh, is create a suite. And so um, what's a suite? It's, it's a way to organize your tests. So a, a, a suite will contain tests. It will contain something called hooks that I'm not going to talk about. But um, you can also put other suites in them. Um, we use a function called describe. Uh, to create a suite, and uh, you give it a title and a callback function, and the callback is the body of the suite, and so the title um, is, you know, basically, this, this is this logical organization. It, wh whatever makes sense to you, uh, you can nest the hell out of these things or not, it's up to you, um, but since we're going to write a test for the request time middleware, that's what we're calling the suite. Um, ostensibly, we would have more than one, but in this talk, we do not. Um, and so uh, next we're going to start trying to turn to write a unit test. But uh, another, another kind of gotcha uh, about Mocha is that uh, it doesn't actually contain anything to, oops, but so the question was uh, kind of about um, conventions uh, for uh, naming suites, naming tests, and, and so you know, I, I feel like some people who, who really are into this, the whole BDD thing, which I'm not going to go into, you can look it up. It's uh, behavior-driven development. It's, it's more than just, like, it's more than just coding. You know, it's, it's like a whole, like, business process thing. And if you're really into that, I'm sure they have some really nice rules that you get to adhere to. But I'm not one of those people. Um, and I don't think most people do that. And so I think at some level, it doesn't matter too much. Um, what I like to do personally is I will have like a suite and it will um, you know, kind of give, give a basic description of, of where we're at. Um, if I have some sort of condition, um, uh, I might want and, and within that condition, I need to have multiple tests. I like to have one assertion per test. And so if I have 
um, a a suite with uh, you know with with some condition, and then I'll have some tests in there, and then I will like try to try to chain them with and and then say so. You know, we'd start with describe request time middleware. Um, uh, describe when such and such is true, and then we're going to have another describe and such and such is false. It should blah 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 blah. And so I try to make it kind of like a sentence, but I don't go crazy about it. I mean, I'm, there there's there's things. I mean, if you have a test test this, this you know file. Like TypeScript, I think, is the biggest consumer of Mocha that I know of. They have like thousands and thousands of tests. Maybe you should ask them how they do it because like, I can't imagine how to organize something like that. But you know, uh, I think just, just whatever works for you is, is fine. There's, there's really there's no reason in my mind to, you know, some, some people like to have like um, to special tokens in there so they can grep for things and stuff and I don't know but so uh, and you'll see that there's um, I talk a little bit about this kind of uh, English language type type thing um, but so Mocha uh, Mocha doesn't have any functionality in it to make assertions which is odd for a test framework it seems like kind of a a fundamental part of a test framework, right? And so with other test frameworks like maybe Jasmine, you get the whole enchilada. And like Jasmine is really similar to Mocha. Um, you you just you get everything with Jasmine. You get your spies, your stubs, your assertion framework, blah 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 blah. You get everything in there. Um, but um, Mocha doesn't. And again, I don't know why. Uh, one can speculate. Um, maybe, maybe uh, the original author felt that it was simply, you know, the uh, the best way to to give people the flexibility to work the way they want. Maybe he was lazy and didn't want to do it. I don't know, but I could I can look at this problem now with with hindsight and say, you know, he made the right choice because, you know, after he he wrote Mocha and it started to take off. It started this kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 a market, or, or is this like, um, you know, all these little assertion libraries started popping up, and and now there's quite a few, and they're all different, and so people have found lots of different ways that they want to write assertions, and certainly now Mocha couldn't support all these, you know, um, it's it's kind of. There's so like unexpected and in chai, I mean, and chai especially is a, is an assertion library that has its own ecosystem. I mean, it's there's there's just like a ton that you can do, and I think I think originally the 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 right choice was made not to kind of go there with the assertion library, but Node comes with one. There's an assert, assert module. Uh, Node uses this assert module to test itself, um, and we're also going to need our middleware. And so um, this is our unit test file. Uh, and we're just going to pull in the assert module. We're going to pull in our middleware. Um, and next, we're going to create a test. And so uh, before, we had describe for a suite. And then in the suite body, we put a test. And you create a test with it, title callback, very similar. Um, you can see here, it kind of went out a little bit. But uh, so. Putting this more together, so we have request time middleware. It should add a request time property to the rec parameter, which is basically all that little middle, middleware function is doing. And so uh, here we have a call function, make assertion, those notes. This is what's going to go in there. Um, and it's uh, if if you uh, kind of write your tests like a sentence, can we not? Um, then the reporting will look a little nicer, but um, so here we go. Here is here is my first try at at at, at the unit test, and so my unit test um, is going to call request time. It's going to pass a uh, empty object, and um, why is it going to pass an empty object? Well. You know this this middleware function. You have to when you're writing unit tests, you have to think of that unit as a completely standalone piece of code. It doesn't. It shouldn't be coupled to anything else really. And 
you know, the, the middleware as we wrote it, it doesn't know anything about Express. All it knows is it gets three parameters and, and you know, it adds a property to some object. And so the, the object that it adds a property to might as well just be an empty object. And this is an example of uh, a unit that uh, just basically has side effects. It doesn't return anything. So um, we, got, we have this, uh, you know, we, we call request time. And so now uh, the state should be modified. And um, we can make an assert and so, uh, make an assertion. So assert OK. OK is, is maybe it's the, s the same thing as the assert function. I don't know. But basically, you pass something to OK. And if that something is truthy, then it passes. If not, it's false. Very, very simple, just pretty much the same kind of bare bones assertion function we wrote before. Um, and so if you know what's going to happen here, don't spoil the surprise. It's a good surprise, I promise. Now we're going to run this. And so how do we run it? We, uh, it ends up in node modules. And so we just call Mocha. It looks in a test folder. It runs all the files in that test folder. And it fails because why? So what do we see here? Um, we see um, this first line, request time middleware. This is the suite. Um, below that is a test. And I believe that, yeah, that number shows up uh, to cross-reference down here. Um, it, it's a number if it fails. It's a check if it passes. Um, and we can see we have no passing tests in seven milliseconds, one failing test in seven milliseconds. And what happened? So <clears throat> it gives us the suite again that failed. It gives us the test title that failed. And right under that, it gives us a stack trace. And it's, the stack trace goes on a while. Uh, I cut it off there. But um, the important part is next is not a function. And so why is next not a function? It's because our middleware tries to call a function called next, and we didn't give it one. Oops. So let's take a look at that request time source again. OK, so what can we give it? We could, we could do it like this. Um, so we have that empty object again. And the second parameter, it, it needs a second parameter. We don't use the second parameter for anything. But it needs something in there, right? So null um, could be void zero. Uh, it could be anything. It could be foo if you want it. Doesn't, it doesn't use it. doesn't matter. And, but the, the third parameter is, is a function. Uh, it, it simply calls a function, and so it has to be a function. That function doesn't have to do anything. Um, and so then we assert that the request time um, property is greater than zero and run it again and Great, it passed. So, does anybody have any questions about this kind of this this flow of of, of uh, writing unit tests and ex executing Mocha and yes, <laughs> it, or it's stubbing. It's a st I would call it a stub. Yeah, and so you're going to find yourself creating something called stubs. Um, when you're writing unit tests quite often, um, where you have some dummy data or you, maybe that, that unit calls a, another function somewhere and maybe you need to stub that out because you don't really care what that does or, or you want to say, oh, so I have function A that calls function B. Well, what happens when function B, what happens to function A when function B re returns such and such? You have this stub or this this. Uh, yeah, that basically pretends it's function B and, and returns a certain value, and that's kind of up to you. And so um, it, there's, there's a lot of kind of bickering about what's best there. And I think, I think it, it more comes down to not how your tests are written, um, more importantly, how your, how your actual code is written. Um, but your test can be indicative that your code is not good. And so this pass, that's great. Um, we have uh, an integration test example. Um, and so again, an integration test is, it's like it's the next level up from a unit test. Um, it's, it's like you pull back and you get this higher level view. Um, it 
that's it's as far as we're going to go with this one. But um, so, what do we have? Uh, you're looking at an ex like a, an express-based web server here, and so all this thing is doing is it's it it creates an express uh, server. It pulls in our middleware, and then it registers a root. That's this uh, app dot get, and so. When I start this server on port 3000, and if I go to the um, path, if I go to you know localhost colon 3000 forward slash Unix dash timestamp, it's going to execute this code. And so what this res.json thing does is it 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 sticks a JSON response in the in a, a JSON object in the response built from my object here. And remember if um, I mentioned that a JavaScript timestamp is not a Unix timestamp, but we want a Unix timestamp, and so uh, we need to, you know, turn that into seconds, and that's about as good as we're going to get there. And finally, this bit at the bottom, I don't know, some of you may have seen something like this before, um, but basically um, what you can do with this file is you can either acquire it or you can execute it straight away. So you can say node app.js, and then it'll start listening on port 3000. But if you require it from some other module, it will not listen because that's not the main module. Um, it's just kind of a, a, an easy way, and maybe not the best way, but it's a way to, to get at this application that we've created and, and test it um, from you know, an integration testing uh, uh, standpoint. And um, uh, uh, one thing with integration testing, and as you get kind of to a higher and higher level um, uh, when you're testing your code, if you go to integration tests, or, or finally you end up with end-to-end -end tests where you're, you know, you're hitting a browser maybe and, and, and clicking some buttons and, and it, it tests all the way through to the, the data layer. Um, you know, the higher up you get, the more tooling you need. Um, and so here we are at, at integration tests, and this would really be a pain in the ass to test without some nice helpers. And so there's a great helper called SuperTest. And SuperTest is a, it's basically, in, it's like a mutant assertion framework that helps you test Express servers. And um, yeah, you're gonna need Express too, but uh, super test. So uh, basically, it it runs these requests against an uh, a server object. You don't have to start a server in process A and then tab over and then start your tests and start hitting hitting the the, the endpoint. Um, you just give it the server object and you can work with it directly, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, you don't have to listen on a port. Uh, it, apparently, it's a lot quicker. Um, you know, I haven't used it too much, but uh, here it is. So super test. Um, and so we have our uh, assert. Uh, as before, we have our app. And so this was that thing I just showed you, which is uh, this, this dude. This is app.js. And so we pull that in, and we have our sweet uh, get Unix timestamp. So, so all the stuff that we want to test when um, that endpoint is hit with a get request. Uh, we might have multiple tests in here, but we just have one, and our test should respond with JSON object containing timestamp. And so this is the same type of thing um, that we're asserting before, but we're asserting it at a, at a higher level now. We wanna make sure that, you know, um, not only was uh, request time you know, written properly. Not only does that function do what we thought it should do, but our whole system works. And, and the point of our system is to have an endpoint with uh, returning a Unix timestamp. And without this integration test, how can we be sure um, other than to test manually? Because our unit test won't tell us if our app actually works. Um, and this won't really tell us that, but it'll get us closer. So. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. One is this node back style with, with callbacks. Um, and this is an example of a uh, asynchronous Mocha test. And so um, when you're using super tests, you're making HTTP requests uh, in tests. These are asynchronous. Um, in this case, uh, so the, it's kind of magic in Mocha. You give it this done function. And if that done function exists, it, uh, Mocha will expect you to call it. Um, 
it doesn't care when. Um, it will eventually time out after so long, but um, it wants you to call done at some point. And so you can do all sorts of async stuff in here, and then when you're finished, you, you call done. Um, and so super test is this request function, um, and we pass it our app instance that we had before. Dot get would be, um, you know, pretend I'm a get request to the Unix timestamp path of this server. Uh, we expect, and this is kind of the assertion portion, we expect a 200 OK uh, status um, back. And then finally, when we're done, if there's an error, which I don't think there ever really could be an error here, but if, if, if there is, we, we can hand that back to done. And so this is the kind of error first uh, callback thing that was so popular, um, and still is for some people, but um, finally, uh, if that's okay, we can make our assertion again. And so what I did there was, um, you know, now that I've, you know, divided this millisecond style timestamp by a thousand, I can now be sure that it's a Unix style timestamp, maybe uh, if it's under this very large number. Um, if, if I didn't do that, you know, division, this would fail. Anyway, so that's one way to do it, but that way sucks. So this way is even better, and you can probably get even better, too, with async await, but um, with Mocha, you can simply return a promise, and if you return a promise from a test, it, it says, oh, you're an async test. Okay, great, and so this just works with promises. It's the same exact test as before. Um, so we, we check to make sure we got a 200 okay, and then we look at the response, and in that body, um, which has been like, magically becomes a JavaScript object out of its JSON format, um, we check the timestamp. And so, there we go. And so we just run Mocha, it finds that we just added this other, uh, I can't remember what I called this file, but we, we tossed it in there and into the tester, and, and it just ran both of them. So the question was, do if you have an asynchronous test, um, is it reported asynchronously or is it is it reported in, in order? The answer is it reported in order. Mo Mocha is, uh, it only works in serial. Um, it, it, it will not execute two tests at a time. If it's doing something like that, you're probably gonna get a really hard to debug error and you're doing something wrong, but um, yeah, it just runs, it's gonna run Unix timestamp and it's gonna hang out there and wait until that's done before it goes to this other file. Uh, it's, it, yeah, it, it, it runs everything in order and it, it, it will not try to, um, you know, do two things at once. Um, yeah, it's, that's, that's about all I got, so. Um, you know, before this, uh, uh, Ben said I was super positive, which is really weird. And so, but I didn't want to let him down. There you go. Um, that's all, folks. Balloons and emoji and a poop. And um, this, this, these slides and the example code is up there at this URL. And you can download it and install it and run it and stuff. Um, there's all sorts of, all that code is in an example folder and it works, I think, so. Thank you.